The grind never stops. The intensity remains. The Spartans are consistently seeking improvement, pushing one another to the next level. Despite the looming presence of recent defeat, the Spartans look to channel greater focus and strength as they look to find the taste of victory. I mean, that Jackson play, I mean, that's where you start to see the potential of him. This guy just turned 18 years old. The biggest guy on the floor. Comes from great bloodlines. His father played at Georgetown. 13 years in the NBA. Was on that Spurs 1999 championship team. His mom, Terry, is the director of operations for the WNBA Players Association. So, basketball family through and through. I was pretty free sphere growing up. It was probably nothing I didn't do. I did everything from swimming to acting to singing to weird things, just like anything you can think of, really. I tried every sport except football. Jaron Jr. was a pure delight growing up, and I'm sure every parent says that, but I think Jaron Sr. and I definitely mean that. It was a pleasure to watch how he shared with the other little kids, his other little friends, and just grew to love life. When I was in San Antonio, I remember first purchasing his indoor basketball goal, and I remember when he was first starting to shoot the ball, for some reason it kept going in with either hand. He kept on the ball and it was going in. It didn't matter what hand. So I think that was the beginning. Uh, as much as we put him on the basketball court, he enjoyed it. But he started to enjoy playing with his teammates, even if he was jumping around in the backcourt, not knowing what to do. As long as he was able to touch the ball, block a shot, <laughs> he was great and he always had a smile on his face. That was the beginning. I think we always knew basketball was gonna be his thing. I mean, in our family, how could it not be his thing? I love seeing him try other sports, but come on. <laughs> basketball was gonna be his thing, for sure. I pretty much fell in love with basketball on my own and my dad wanted to make sure he didn't push me in anything. I was born in New Jersey. I lived in Virginia, I lived in Maryland, lived in Indiana, lived in San Antonio. So I, I lived in a lot of places. San Antonio was for the Spurs, and then Indiana was for my mom, but it ended up really working out for me as well because Indiana is a great basketball state, which kind of pushed me into that more. All the schools in Indiana are run like a college, ironically, the school I first went to, Park Tudor, our coach would always come up here and scout Michigan State's practice and come back and do the same thing. So everything from how you act off the court to professionalism, it was just all taken from here. And you see it a lot. And when I'm here now, I'm like, wow, I did this before. But it, it was very professional. And it helped me a lot kind of morph into this easy and not all the you know things you have to do here weren't shocking. College recruiting is a process that can swirl emotions. It can be an overwhelming process that few get the opportunity to enjoy. Team camp, we came up here. I knew this was a big time program. There were so many teams here, I was like, man, I don't even know if they're gonna see me play, but they ended up seeing me play. And coach offered me while I was here. And I was like, shocked, like it was crazy. I didn't, I didn't, it was unbelievable. I had no words, I was like stunned. And I was like, man, this is, this is amazing, and I hadn't even seen the campus yet. And I just got that feeling from it. And from there, I just, I came here a lot on visits, came here a lot on games, I got to be around the team. Mostly it was the guys pitching the school to me, but honestly, it wasn't even a pitch. They were just being themselves, and me and being integrated around them just made me feel welcome. Coach Izzo would always tell me if I didn't play good in a game, or like what I need to do better. Coach Fife would always call me and be like, look, you gotta focus on this for the next game. And it was whether I came to that school or not, he just wanted me to be a good basketball player, which is what I like. Jaron Jackson had the support of his potential coaches, 
but he also had the support and insight from his parents. It's kind of two different support bases. My dad's more of experience, played a great team in Georgetown. It was number one at one point, so he knows everything. And then he was able to get to the NBA and play for a long time just because of his work ethic. And he, he can teach me anything about the game. I mean, things that I, don't, I wouldn't even think of. Our family's goal was to make it easy for him to make a decision. As long as we got all the information for him to take into consideration, we felt comfortable. So when it was time to make the decision, he felt completely comfortable with his decision. That was our goal. And then my mom, on the other hand, is more like business savvy with general things like that. So she's just been very you know, supportive of me throughout this whole process, but making sure I understand that basketball is a business. It's not, it's not something to play around with. Like it, it's very serious. I worked for the NCAA, and I thought that that was a blessing, quite honestly. I mean, my husband and I were committed to ensuring that Jaron Jr. had a great, a positive recruiting experience. I think we gave him the best of both worlds. When he made it, we were proud. We had no questions. It was an awesome time for him to make a, a quality decision at such a young age to make a decision about his life. A lot of excitement around Jaron Jackson. He's added 20 pounds of muscle. Looks really good. And with those long arms, I mean, a lot of potential. They trusted me to make the right decision. They always told me just to be patient and not rush anything, which is what sometimes kids have a tendency to do, just rush it to get it over with because recruiting takes so long. But they were there for me the whole time. At six feet and 11 inches tall, Jaron walked into his freshman season with plenty to learn. My high school coach always told me, pick Michigan State, you know what that means. Like you, you're picking the good and the bad, the, the pretty and the ugly, you're picking everything. And I was like, yeah, I know, I know. But obviously I, I didn't know. So you're always gonna be thrown by little things that, that are different than high school. And I was always told that if coach is getting on you, that means he cares. If he's not getting on you, then then you should be concerned, and he's on everybody. So I, I just felt I felt good that he, you know, he was pushing me to be my best, and that's initially why I wanted to go there. I felt like he would be the main coach to push me to be better every day, even if I thought I couldn't get any farther. When he, he'll push me past that line. You know, Jaron Jackson is one of the more unique players I've ever coached because I think he has a ceiling that is a lot taller than the one we're sitting in. You know, yes, he's 6'11 with a 7'4 wingspan, and he's got all the measurables. He's a, he's a very good student. He's an intelligent player. But he had to work on some things, you know? He's got to continuously gain weight. And what did he do? He took that to heart right away, hit the weight room, gained 20 pounds of, of muscle, and uh, still looks skinny at times to me. But trust me, he's a lot bigger than he was. Strength is important. It's crazy because they're so much stronger than me. And it was deflating at first, but you know, getting in the weight room, getting stronger was a big thing. Being able to manage quick turnarounds, like in terms of games, because when you're playing in high school, playing a game after game after game isn't that hard because they're not as grueling. In college, it's grueling. It's like you went through the trenches when you played a game in college. He's not really weak anymore, but he's not as strong as he's gonna be or, or can be as he keeps lifting and gets stronger. And there is just such a, such a, such a high ceiling for him. Sometimes when you play a game, the next day you have a scouting report on the next team and everything's changed. You have to, new defensive principles, new way to guard a team, new players. So that type of thing, you have to wrap your head around and continue to stay focused. The good news is, we want him to achieve it. He wants to achieve it. And he's not afraid to work to get it done. And that's, those are qualities that, uh, that superstars have. With those superstar qualities, Jaron finished his first semester on the Dean's List and has taken a strictly business uh -huh. attitude toward his goals since a young age. Strictly business, that's a slogan my mom and my dad really take seriously. The, the core of it, it means that Whenever you're doing something, always remember that it's a business and you're doing it, you know, why you're doing it. Like basketball is fun, I enjoy it, I love it, but you're, you know, I'm trying to do this for the rest of my life, so it's a business. You know, you take it serious, you go in there trying to get better every day. 
And that goes not just with basketball, with anything you're doing. So that can relate to a nine to five job. That can relate to a job in finance. That can relate to anything. So strictly business, that's what that means. In terms of my play, I just pretty much just do what I do in practice. So you don't win the game on the floor, you win it in practice because you just replicate it, which makes everything a lot easier, especially our defense. We play so hard in practice that in the game, they're just, the offense is stagnant. They're not coming in the paint at all. The last couple of weeks, he's made improvement after improvement. We know he can shoot the three. He's got an incredible post game that he hasn't shown everybody yet, starting to. And of course, he might be the best shot blocker in, in America. DuBose showing something, and Jackson coming back to get the rejection. What a play by Jackson. And he goes down the lane. His shot's rejected by, you got it, Jaron Jackson Jr. Is that five of them? That is the fifth. It's just fun to me, honestly. I've always blocked shots since I was a kid. I played on the team with, like, ball dominant, shooting all the time. And I was like, there's got to be something I can do to help us do something and, like, feel good. So I was like, you know, I'm going to just block shots. I'm going to just block everything. So I was always, always blocking shots. And that's probably became my main strength, and I always kept it. Now I kind of carried it on to college, and it's kind of the same principles, but you have to be a lot smarter about it. We were playing Notre Dame, and I blocked somebody's shot. Here's Colson working down low. Tough shot, and it's blocked by the freshman. We go down, and we throw a lob from half court. alley Bridges! What a sequence for the Spartans! And Miles dunks it, and I think, like, the, the crowd went crazy. Like, it was so loud that I couldn't even, like, I'm, st I'm still feeling it right now. Like, it was so loud that I couldn't think, I couldn't talk, like, I couldn't hear anything. I was going crazy. Especially when it's for you, it just kind of feels like you're playing defense with everybody around you. That's what you dream about. Like, it's, it's kind of like when you're at home and you're, like, thinking of that game winner, you're thinking about the crowd, you're thinking about all that stuff, and when it happens, kind of get chills, like in the moment, you're like, man, you're really in it. Like, that's the power of visualization, honestly. You seek something out, you go accomplish it. That's, that's how I've always been. Using that power of visualization, Jaron has one goal for this season that sits high above all others. We know the main goal. I mean, that's something that doesn't even have to be said. That's the main goal is to be a national champion, being the best team when it's all said and done in March. We just want to keep working and worry about ourselves, not worry about what anybody else is doing. And the formula we have, we should be right there with everybody at the end of the day. I think he's maturing every day because he's almost a year younger than half the kids that have come in like him. So there's so many bright spots with Jaron. Um, his offense, his passing, his rebounding, he, he can run the court real well. His shot blocking, his academics. I feel blessed to coach a guy like him. With the 35th pick in the 2012 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors select Draymond Green from Michigan State University. Deontay Davis. Adrian Payne. Gary Harris. Denver. From Michigan State University. Denzel Valentine. From Michigan State University. The Spartan basketball program has sent many hardworking athletes to the NBA. All of them have left East Lansing eager to take on their next challenge, yet none of them have let go of their foundation. Although former teammates must shed the green and white as they go head to head in the NBA, the Spartan bond formed during their time in East Lansing continues to grow stronger. Spartans like Denzel, Gary, and Bryn treasure that bond and always value the ability to return home. This is what I've dreamed about my whole life. Um, this is what we worked hard here for, you know, to get to the next level. You know, we're finally here, but you know, like we want more than, than yeah, just yeah. being here. I don't think people realize how hard it is you know, people think it's real laid back, it's chill, but um, it's hard because you got to think about everybody's the best player on their team. And, um, you know, coming together, competing against the best guys in the world, NBA is the highest league in the world. You're not on your stuff, you could be out of the league in a year, you know. Um, but if you're on your stuff, you could be in the league 10, 15 years, have a great career, 
So, um, you know, it can go either way. It's just about your mindset once you get there. You know, you kind of make a goal and achieve the goal. It feels good for a second, but then you're kind of on to the next goal. You tie all back into Michigan State. It's like, yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, we might win a game. Might be happy we won a big game, but hmm. two days later, we got another one. So it's back to it. Got to lock back in and get ready to play. You know, when we're out there, we're still friends, but at the same time, we're trying to compete against each other. But uh, it's just a little weird, but. You know, it's, that's the that's the cool part about, you know, moving on to life. I think it's cool because, you know, we go to each other's cities and as soon as we land, like, yo, Zell, what's good? Where you at? Yo, B, where we yeah. about to go get some food? We've dealt with, you know, the long Big Ten season and, you know, for us to be here in the league is crazy. And, you know, I'm happy. Every time I see them, I check to see how they do every time they play checking in on them, and once we play, you know, it's fun. We're out there competing like we're back here. I mean, we all friends and stuff, but once we're on the court, you know, we're going at each other, and uh, that's what we're supposed to do. But as soon as, you know, the game's over, win, lose, or draw, you know, these are my guys. It's pretty cool, like like they said, you know, to come back and um, see, see the fans, see the team, you know. You feel like you're in college again, you know. It's, it's just... I know for me, once y'all made that Final <laughs> Four run, I felt like I made a Final Four run. Yeah. I was in the crib, hype, going crazy, celebrating like they, like I won too. It's always fun seeing them guys you used to play with and and the new guys that you're like kind of excited to see what they're gonna bring. It's always fun for me to to see to see that you know to see because I know the work they put in. So it's cool to see it on a different from a different perspective. When we were here, the Former guys used to come back, so I mean it's just tradition. You know, it's up to us to you know to keep it going. So you know when the guys who are playing now, once they leave, they come back. Maybe I would have done some things differently if I would have knew what I know now. So to come back and tell these guys, like, you know, these are some of the things I've seen. This might help you. Um, you know, people did that for me and it helped me. So I think we owe them that. One thing that that really stuck with me about him is just his dedication and motivation every day. Like. You know, it don't matter whether it's the summer, middle of the winter, fall, whatever, he approaches every day the same. You know, he's trying to win the day. He's trying to get better no matter what. I think, you know, when you're young and you're here, you kind of don't appreciate it as much because it's always on you, pushing you. Um, yeah, but once you leave, you realize he's just trying to get the best out of you. And, you know, for you to still have a relationship with him, you know, you talk to some guys in the league and they don't even talk to their college coaches. and. Um, you know, with us, it is welcome, welcomes us back with open arms, and um, it's all love. The standard he really set for me was, you know, it helped me a lot because I was always always trying to, you know, up my game every time, and he held me to a standard where he wouldn't accept anything less. And to learn that, you know, here has helped me to get to where I'm at, and it's going to help me stay where I'm at. So. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Yeah, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Pleasant good evening to everybody around the great state of Michigan. We're back home in East Lansing. It's Michigan State, it's Indiana. It's time to regroup and do a little soul searching. So this game, the feel in the Breslin Center is a little different. It's more of a, a wait and see. Will the team respond? We're underway from East Lansing. And how about Michigan State with the new units right now, right? Inside, Nick Wheeler, Carter Dillon takes it in, and the Spurs are on the board. Six, six to shoot, Johnson, deep J, kill. Bridges. What's wrong with that? Look at the handle. Wade in the game now. Drives, fades from 15. Bullet, McQuaid. I tell you what, that jump shot is like a rifle. Michigan State on a 9-0 run. Indiana endangered now. Robert Johnson. And an offensive foul ball on Johnson as McQuaid slides in and takes the charge. Baseline, Jackson. Jared Jackson Jr. 12-0 run for the Spartans. IU scoreless in the last four and a half minutes. McQuaid. And the foul. 
stepping into the passing lane. I'm just so impressed with the activity. The lob! Mackerel! Bridges from Winston! Michigan State all business in this first half. Winston the inbound. He finds Ward, turn around, lefty jump hook. Good. How about the catch? The footwork to gather himself, but then the left hand jump hook inside. Smaller than Dixon, though. A little bit. But inside. Oh! Bridges! 17 points. And you won't see a better duck than that all year, folks. Michigan State with a 69 47 lead. Playing maybe their best overall game against a quality opponent this season. Bridges down the lane, forced it up, and hits. Oh, look at this, again, down the middle of the lane, Gus. He's loving it right now. Katie, bar the door. The Spartans are rolling tonight. Michigan State, five players in double figures, led by Bridges is 22. But tonight you played with some urgency. You played like you cared. The big show time was here. TV was here. You guys put on a great show. Everybody that reached out to me, Twitter, friends, they said this team, if they want it, are going to be national champions. So. You're going to be there if we get there? I'll be there with Irving, I promise. Oh, yeah. <laughs>